It's hard to believe, but Thursday marks three years since the final episode of Breaking Bad aired on TV. While it was on, Breaking Bad gripped the culture more tightly than almost any other show. And its legacy is still intact today, I think, because the arc of episodes that concluded the story brought a satisfying and brutal reckoning on what came before. I think the best episode of the series can be found in that arc, and today I want to talk about that episode, Ozymandias, the poem it references, and how the ideas in both help us understand the show as a whole. In a lot of ways, this episode, though third from the last, bookends the entire series. Writer Maura Wally Beckett makes this explicit by staging the pre-opening credits scene as a flashback to the first episode when Walter White and Jesse Pinkman are making their very first batch of crystal meth. The reaction has begun. The narrative of the show is its own kind of chemical reaction, brought about by choices like Walter's choice to make crystal meth to raise money for his cancer treatment, like the first lie he's rehearsing to tell his wife about this, that lead to the horrifying consequences we're about to witness. Director Ryan Johnson makes these things explicit in another way. Where Morawali Beckett has plot and dialogue, Johnson has visuals, visuals like the slow fading of past elements that show the passage of time and the disappearance of the people and the things that once were. What we see in this episode is effectively the bloody end of Heisenberg's reign. But what's interesting is how not bloody it is. Wally Beckett and Johnson place the focus instead on reactions, reaction shots. And so we get an episode of gazes, quizzical gazes, angry gazes, blank gazes, penetrating gazes. What's important isn't that Walt gets away with Holly, for example, but that Skyler sees it. The death of Hank is showed for all of two seconds before Ryan Johnson quickly cuts away. Compare this to the 44 seconds he lingers on Walt, Skyler's, Flynn's, and Marie's reaction to that news. So in this episode, we see Walter White through the eyes of everyone else, including virtually all of the key players in the show. And as is often the case, these people see more about Walt than he can about himself. You're the smartest guy I ever met. And you're too stupid to see. He made up his mind ten minutes ago. All these reactions, these gazes, makes Walt's own tragedy even more stark. It's his inability to see himself through the eyes of those around him. Other people's gazes are like a mirror that we use to see ourselves. As Johnson highlights twice in this episode, Walt's not ready to look into mirrors yet. When he arrives home later in the episode, he uses all his regular lines. Just listen to me! I negotiated. Everything is gonna be fine. I need both of you to trust me. We have to go right now. That's all we have. But his words fall flat on Skyler, and they sound absurd to us. Wally Beckett uses these words, brilliantly I think, as an extension of Walt's blindness. I mean, this is the climactic scene of the episode, and the climactic moment in this scene is not the fight between Walt and Skyler, but a reaction bracketed by two versions of the same line. The first time Walt screams it. We're a family! But when he finally glimpses himself through the eyes of his family, those same words deflate entirely. This is where we can find some insight in the episode title, Ozymandias, which references a sonnet by Percy Shelley from 1818. In fact, it's the poem that Brian Cranston reads in a promotional video for the season, showing that Vince Gilligan and the writers wanted to highlight this connection. The poem tells the story of Shelley's meeting with a traveler who describes in detail a ruined sculpture of Ozymandias, the Greek name for Ramses II, the most powerful pharaoh of the Egyptian empire, and the empty landscape where his great empire used to stand. Some of the parallels here are obvious, like this shot where Walter White falls rigidly to the ground like a statue crumbling, like Walter's frown and wrinkled lip, like the lone and level sands that stretch far away. Ryan Johnson even stages some visual flourishes like having the broken glass of the car window look a lot like Walt and Jesse's blue meth visualizing their empire fading into the desert. Like the poem, Breaking Bad is a comment on the transience of power and the arrogance of those who acquire it. But the poem is also about seeing through the eyes of others. 
After all, we only see Ozymandias through the eyes of the sculptor, and the sculptor's work through the eyes of the traveler, and the traveler's comment through the words of the poet. I think this is so applicable to Breaking Bad and to this episode particularly because what makes drama work, what makes it interesting, isn't climactic action scenes or the bombastic declaration of colorful characters or even big ideas. It's the succession of reactions that cascade off of every choice, the chemical and emotional reactions of people living together on Earth. These days, there is an incredible pressure for showrunners of a show like this to have an end in mind, to stick the landing with big payoffs and developments that will shock all of us. Well, Ozymandias has those things, but I give the writers and director major credit for sticking to what matters in an incredibly important episode, for letting us see Walter White, King of Kings, undoing through the many eyes of those who loved him. There is a brand new Nerdwriter video every week, so if you click that box that I've set up right there, you'll subscribe to this channel and get all those videos, and I really appreciate that. I have to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They've never asked to interfere in the content, which is a standard of mine for sponsorships, and they're amazing for that. If you don't know, they make sleek, intuitive websites. I just made one called the nerdwriter.net. You can check that out. Um, and if you sign up for a year, you can get a free domain name, and if you use the offer code nerdwriter, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Um, um, thanks guys for that, and I will see you all next Wednesday.